Elsewhere in the weather, heavy flooding is expected this weekend after... Yes, yes guys, I referee my first match this weekend. I'm so gassed. You sure, bro? Have you seen the weather? I am gassed. No, seriously, guys, the flooding, it's going to be a lot, all right? There's, there's a lot of precipitation. Ah, yo, this journey's right dragging. Now. Why are we going so slow right now? How are you? I'm under the water. Please help me. Very interesting! Jesus Christ, this rain is so heavy. If only there'd been a sign. Yo guys, it is your boy Niren here, and you are watching FTW. This is of course the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst. Yeah, I'll open to a couple of bees. Let's see if you've got your couple of bees. What have we got? Of what football has to offer during the last seven days. But what's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, a cable car got stuck over a ravine in Pakistan with terrifying scenes as six kids and two adults were left hanging in the sky. But in the end, they were saved over the course of 12 hours. As I said, thankfully, they were eventually removed. But bro, look at this cable car. It's made out of oven trays. If Harry Maguire's in that, he's weighing it down. Put his head on the floor, you'd slowly drop to the ground. Make it a top heavy fraction. Also, whoever's flying this drone up to a family of people potentially meeting their demises on the wrong side of history. If I was stuck in that cable car seeing that drone film me, there's only one thing that's happening to it. On to the football though now and we start with Chelsea's Premier League action where the Blues lost 3-1 to West Ham. After this action, it's difficult to talk about football. After spending the GDP of all of South oh. America, Todd Bowley's Chelsea were undone by a selection of bubbles. Aguero, Antonio and Paqueta wrapped it up for the Hammers to leave Chelsea winless again. They've got more signings under Todd Bowley than wins. Enzo Fernandez is on three since signing. They're spreading victories over his eight-year contract as well. This game also gave us our first glimpse at British record signing Moises Caicedo, and Liverpool fans were ready for his mistakes. I'll be honest with you, they didn't have to wait long. If you were keeping note, then you got through about three pieces of A4 paper. Jurgen Klopp was counting the Ecuadorian's errors after he came off the bench. He said that he likes to make tackles in interviews. It's a shame, he should have specified making clean tackles, as he gave away a penalty in injury time. He misses. Yeah ball so much. You look emotional, mate. Pochettino's running back to Brighton now as we speak, looking for a refund. Meanwhile, Alexis McAllister caught Caicedo, his former teammate, at full time after deserting his Liverpool side. Fuck Chelsea. Chelsea's shit. Yeah. Fuck Chelsea, what? Fuck you. Fuck Chelsea. Fuck you. Fuck what? Chelsea, pussy or what? Say something. This brother had high ping. One bar signal <laughs> lagging about. <laughs> Chelsea have got the guy praying already. Please, God, don't make me stay here for eight whole years. Todd Bowley's already arrived at the Amex with 123 million for Kaoru Matoma. Meanwhile, Lucas Paqueta's penalty put the nail in the coffin, and he was gassed after putting a 14 to 1 bet on the late spot kick. And you know me, I will bet every pound I got. He he is being investigated over a yellow card that he received last season and suspicious betting around the minute at which it happened. It would indicate that he's spot fixing in his own games, which will result in a massive ban. And we have the tackle in question here. Yeah, listen, it's a wrap for the guy. Sold his car. For a William Hill hacker. This guy's rapping on an Ivan Tony instrumental. Mate, listen, the plan to bet on some nonsense between West Ham and Brentford, we will be there. This was the banker. This was the one that couldn't fail. This was one that's never failed. David Moyes will be attempting to bail him out when the Brazilian government come calling. They have been training with me, dodge, tres, cuatro uh, times. He's lost his hometown so much money after Man City pulled out of a bid to sign him. The head of his village is absolutely fuming. Meanwhile, Brazil's Minister of Economy has woken up to seeing a 70 million pound loss today. One Arsenal fan tweeted that he found it weird seeing Paqueta as an odds-on favourite to receive a yellow card before the game kicked off against Villa. This man predicted it from last season. MI11 hiring. Meanwhile, Rhys James is injured again. This man's made of Rice Krispies, I swear. We're going to be reminiscing to the first 83 minutes of the season when Rhys James was actually fit. He was special. He tweeted about a week before saying that a new era was loading. This is the loading that's going on here. Playing a full year of football. Who says no? Reese James does. We have Reese explaining the situation to Pochettino here. Mauricio, I can't. I can't move it, move it anymore. Meanwhile, Malo Gusto is at least going to get a good run in the team at right wing back. And he was keen to ensure that Reese stayed injured upon visiting him at hospital. <laughs> 
Not a great start, it's got to be said. And Chelsea fans are already asking for them to break the bank. Break the bank? How many banks have you got to break? You've spent a billion. HSBC's been broken and dislocated. Oh, for fuck's sake. Not again, lads. At least Chelsea fans will have a new chant if they do sign Victor Ossiman. United faced off against Tottenham elsewhere and struggled, losing 2-0. Tottenham looked solid in the Postacoglu era, but for United fans, and they're really going through it. I, Roy Michael, former supporter of Manchester United, do swear that I will support Arsenal with all my heart. The Red Devils looked off it, but did miss some big chances. Bruno Fernandes was depressed seeing his Rabona cross go wasted. Meanwhile, Anthony thinks he can do flip-flaps just because he's Brazilian. It's time to just accept that he's actually Angolan. Andrea Nana had enough but was confused at the airport trying to get a flight back home. You go over to Italy? To yes. Where? Madrid. And he was seen outside Tottenham Stadium in London, homesick, taking it out on pigeons. Fuck off! You baby eyed little sticks! Pape Sarr scored his first goal for Tottenham and brought out the Marcus Rashford celebration against United. Him and Richarlison were teasing each other on the bench about the goal. Hey, listen, I secured a goal before you did, bro. And Alessandro Martinez's own goal compounded United's misery. This is what the butcher is actually cooking. If United don't score against Forest this weekend, Rafael Varane's winning goal of the month. Lisandro's own goal is coming second. Here we have him collecting the award for it. I bet you're wondering how I got myself into this situation. This stat about Mason Mount before kickoff is an absolute violation. United keep calling him MM7. Mini Minter's not happy about this. Eric Ten Hag's side also played Burnley and lost to the behind closed doors friendly. Hi, <laughs> listen, United fans were not happy seeing this one. Burnley are a team I'd love to see get relegated. I'm sorry if there are any Burnley fans. Don't worry, there's not many. Oh, shit! Eric famously said that his team don't play friendlies. Yeah, clearly. They didn't bother this time. It's defensively, they're more exposed and speed on a Tuesday evening. Oh, you, God. you look awful. Oh my God. A Man City and Pep Guardiola was slapped with a parking ticket by an officer who then asked for a pic with him. You can't park there, huh? The audacity to ask for a selfie after is crazy. What's he even expecting Pep to say in a selfie video? I'm so happy, believe me. I'm so happy. More than you believe I'm happy. Finally, Man City are getting some more tickets through the door. Mikel Arteta could be seen bringing further evidence to Manchester police to get him arrested. These lot have got 116 charges hanging over him now. Pep was harsh on himself initially when he realised he'd broken the law. My shape of myself. Who so did have a change of heart getting chased really down by the ticket inspector. At least he managed to park successfully. Unlike Jack Grealish. But I can't see things going well when they face off against Sheffield United and they park the bus against him. What do you mean I've got the ticket? I'm not even the one parking it. Arsenal survived a late scare to earn a win versus Crystal Palace. 1-0 the final score at Sellers Park. There was late controversy here when Tommy Yasu saw red. He got yellow for time wasting two seconds over allotted. And then the second one was soft as well. They don't like it! Mikel Arteta must be getting fed up of this man. He's got to write another strongly worded email. I get a red card. You get absolutely no punishment whatsoever. One Crystal Palace fan was showing Tommy Yasu where the X it was, and this gave Palace a chance back into the game. Wacky Manderson was celebrating with the rest of the squad at a potential draw. Palace needed Chris MD here. He tested Ramsdale more than Odson Edouard ever did. But in the end, Arsenal would hold on while down to 10 men, thanks to an Odegaard penalty. Declan Rice was primed and ready in the background. He waits, waiting to strike, almost like a cobra. Meanwhile, Ben White was trying to impress Bukayo Saka and Eddie Nketiah with the new lingo he picked up at drinks afterwards. Get shift, my G! <laughs> oh, bummer out. It's a madness. Now, in the culmination of the Women's World Cup, and it was England v Spain. A Spanish side whose story has been one full of turmoil and federation clashes, facing up against an England team plagued by injuries. Nerves were jangling before kickoff. I don't get nervous, but I'm starting to get a bit shaky, you know? I mean, I'm a little bit weird. Gareth Southgate was trying to spur the team on, saying that they've already done more than the men's team have. Listen, Gareth, you don't have to remind me. But how would a second ever Women's World Cup final go? Hi again. It's me. A solitary goal from Olga Carmona on the half an hour mark would be enough to sink the Lionesses. It's not coming home once again. Our World Cup dreams dad has gone for the milk and he's not returning. Things got heated during this one, I will be honest with you. While England goalkeeper Mary Earps was the hero again with save after save and a stop from the penalty spot. In the end, we didn't create enough and we deserved a defeat. Lucy Bronze ironically picked up a silver medal, though she wasn't exactly down for a conversation with Gianni Infantino. I have a very strong feeling 
feeling. Now, in more serious news, and Manchester United have announced they're releasing Mason Greenwood via mutual consent. This after a leak from The Athletic suggesting his integration back into the team. Now, I made a video on this, and this is the last time I'll talk about him. It's the right decision, ultimately, for Manchester United, but in the worst possible way. With statements from the club and Mason himself saying he was cleared of all charges. Well, no, you weren't, because the charges were dropped due to a witness pulling out. They are very different things. It's really a bit of a shame, and it felt like United basically saying, well, we would have brought him back into the team, but you guys told us not to. Saudi Arabia won't even go near him because they don't want to tarnish their image. When you're getting turned down by Saudi Arabia for its image, you know that it's bad. What next for Mason? I mean, McDonald's, hopefully. I think the only sport he's got qualifications in at this point is UFC, so. Elsewhere in us the news that Harry Kane made his Bayern Munich Bundesliga debut and marked it with a goal and an assist. An impressive start versus Werder Bremen in a 4-0 win, though Bundesliga goalkeepers at this point don't even look like professionals half of the time. Then took a selfie with the fans of Werder Bremen. He's also a dad this week, which is beautiful stuff. Happy for him and his partner, truly. Hung Min has been replaced by a new son already. That FPL link up is about to be absolutely crazy. You gotta ask yourself though, did Hung Min Son get an assist in all of this too? Oh, Hung Min Son! What a screamer! I'm not sure why Harry himself is naked in the bed like he gave birth. Rumours have it that baby said more coherent words than Harold has this week. But at least when he asks for a bottle, Harry will have many, many on hand. Now after missing out on Moises Caicedo and Romeo Lavia, Liverpool have settled on their new DM. It's Wataru Endo, a 30 year old formerly of Stuttgart. Imagine the poor guy trying to understand Scouse. He's a Champions League winner though, lads. I will tell you that. Guy Sado have some of that, mate. Though I can't help but feel he's going to get a little bit distracted when he comes up against Rice in the midfield. Lionel Messi watch now. This will stop soon, I swear. He just keeps doing things. Into Miami won their first silverware in the club's history with a League's Cup penalty shootout win. Leo and Koa brought a Beckham at own club his first trophy already. And there was a crazy end to this one with a last minute chance in regular time. After an exceptional messy goal, this one went to penalties. One fan brought a companion to try and spur Leo on. And it ended with a goalkeeper v goalkeeper finale in the shootout. Leo would lift a trophy with captain DeAndre Yedlin. And it's crazy how much of an influence he's had at the club already. Though we should expect magic from a man who can fold his clothes so satisfyingly. One man that's actually turned down Chelsea this window is Michael Alize. Instead signing a new contract with Crystal Palace. The Eagles decided to rub this in Chelsea fans' faces. Uploading a TikTok of Alize with... With the song Chelsea Dagger. It's a shit award for Palace. Meanwhile, after Brighton inflicted a heavy defeat on Wolves, they tweeted, I for one am enjoying the start for the season. For one, yeah, that's, they're getting a shit award as well. Now, I didn't cover the UEFA Super Cup because frankly, I don't believe in it. But there was some wholesome scenes when Man City lifted the trophy against Sevilla as after being left out by a lot of the Man City and Sevilla players, one visually impaired girl got a chance to actually meet Jack Grealish, who took the time to greet her and chat to her before taking his medal. Just another reason why Jack Grealish seems like an actually sound person. Kevin De Bruyne has gifted his Manchester City teammates platinum phones this week. I mean, look, listen, he's gone all out. Julian Alvarez will be disappointed when he realises it's on a gift gaff contract. Meanwhile, Richarlison has said that he will not be shaking hands with Mikel Antonio this season after comments the West Ham striker made about him on a podcast. I mean, even if Richarlison did try and shake his hand, he'd probably miss anyway. Newcastle United confirmed that a Saudi Arabian friendly will be taking place at St. James's Park. But sports washing isn't even that subtle anymore, is it? Rename them Al Greg Army. It won't be so funny though when Newcastle fans have to watch a Saudi Arabian striker join the club on loan as part of the deal. I fucking said hit it! What's he just said it for, you fucking stupid? Everton fans are depressed already after their 4 0 defeat to Villa. Don Duran came on as a sub and scored immediately. Duran? Duran! <laughs> Meanwhile, a comedian has pulled off a pretty much perfect slow motion version of scoring a goal and then celebrating it whilst on stage. It's very impressive, but I have seen this man on my timeline more than I've seen my family this year. Meanwhile, Portsmouth were left bemused when the referee walked down the tunnel halfway through their most recent league game, only to realise that he'd pulled his calf and needed to be replaced. A message came over their tannoy system asking for a trained referee in the crowd, to which one fan was able to save the day, and despite there being 20 
21 minutes of injury time, the game could finish with a fan as part of the official squad. Now, over in Spain, and Real Madrid won again versus Almeria, with Jude Bellingham scoring once more. This guy is taking La Liga by storm, but elsewhere in his brother, Job, scored two for Sunderland as well. Mate, Mark Bellingham's DNA is absolutely mental. This man has got a set of bollocks on him. His balls are made of pure gold, mate. They're worth £68 million per testicle. Can't tell me otherwise. His teammate facilitated him in scoring those goals, though, by being absolutely everywhere. It's Camavinga. The Real Madrid squad is going to look crazy by 2026. The guys even become a linesman, for fuck's sake. If the bus breaks down for Real, there's only one man for it. Stadium renovations? You know the score. Robert Lewandowski was on the receiving end of some... Abstract defending this week elsewhere in La Liga. This defender's seen his TikTok account, mate. On a level, how is that not a penalty, mate? Yeah, we're gonna send this one up to VAR. What we saying? Yeah, come on. Malaga fans are disappointed at the club's lack of activity in the summer transfer window, so they took it upon themselves to travel to the city's airport and sign a random Don who was coming through the departure lounge. Get him in the shirt, mate. Speaking of Malaga shirts, though, they have been busy off the pitch, designing a special custom-made kit for a young ill fan, putting the badge on the other side to accommodate for his catheter. His family requested that Malaga would make a special shirt for him, and within 24 hours, they'd sent one out to the young fan. Truly amazing stuff from the club. And other wholesome news coming out of Spain, Santi Cazorla is back at Real Oviedo, the club where it all started for him. He's basically making sure they don't have to pay any of his wages and that a percentage of his shirt sales go to improving the club's youth academy, a youth academy he came through. In France and at PSG, it's Hollywood Football Club back again. Kylian Mbappe scored in his first game back in the starting 11. This, of course, after being banished to the undesirables. And during his celebration, he shouted that he was here to stay to the PSG fans. Well, that's that sort of then for the next three months till he decides to leave. The PSG Ultras can see through the lies though. He's gonna need serious security getting out of that stadium tonight. One man who's just left the club is Neymar and his transport is a little bit different. Flying via a private Boeing 747. Yeah, you know what? I'm glad I've been dealing with paper straws to look after the environment. Meanwhile, this guy's gallivanting around on his own British Airways flight. He's responsible for 63% of global warming. Here we have Neymar as a rainforest evaporates behind him. I wouldn't even mind, but what's he even getting up to on that flight? The Mile High Club for him is basically a family reunion. Thierry Henry is the new French under-21s manager, and I guess that means the end of his connection with Kate Abdo, Jamie Carragher, and Mika Richards. Thierry, who's going to be on CBS next season? Hi, my name is Thierry Henry. In Korea. Ah! Yeah, Emrick Aubameyang was celebrating a goal this week and had his trim rubbed out. Now, that is crazy. Imagine having your hairline deleted. OGC Nice didn't receive a penalty this week, despite Evan Guesson's boot looking like this after a challenge in the area. And in good news, Sergio Rico, who was hospitalized three months ago and in a coma, has left hospital for the first time this week. I'm wishing him the best in the rest of his recovery. That is great news, though. In Italy, and Milan have released their third kit for the season. I can't lie, I'm rating it. It's a vibe, but it looks like a lost man. And over at Fiorentina, if you're a coach, do not get in the big man manager's way. Lovro Meyer has swapped Ren for Wolfsburg over in the Bundesliga, and the German club's announcement maybe could have done with a little bit of work on Twitter. Meanwhile, Arsenal were reminiscing about a Granite Xhaka wonder strike this week, only for Bayer Leverkusen to call them out and suggest they're looking for interactions. Very win. I'm so happy. Now that it's time for your goals of the week, ah, oh, let's get straight into this. First of all, Tom Broad of South Shields has been allowed far too much time and space to run into his opposition's half. But as a defender, they probably weren't expecting all that much. If you thought that was far out, over in Mexico, and Rolando Gonzalez has beaten the opponent's goalkeeper from the halfway line. But finally, over in Belgium, and the techiest goal of the week goes to Armando Lapage with a two-touch volley that floats into the top corner beautifully. Al Naza defeated Shabab 4-2 a couple days ago, but there were some questionable decisions in this one, and Cristiano Ronaldo was not pleased about them, and shoved an official who wanted to get a picture with him. But Ron might have been disappointed about that, but at least he's got a different job to go to. To be 
be honest, Al Nazar's goalkeeper might be a shop assistant genuinely. After a fan had to shout for him to concentrate when a back pass was aimed back at his own goal. Steven Gerrard's Al Etifak have won their second game on the bounce in the league and were celebrating at full time. <laughs> This poor guy was trying to work out what the fuck two is in Arabic. We've got at least a translation though for what the players are saying in the dressing room after Steven Gerrard's influence. It's it's Al Itihad pulled off a very clever goal this week with a quickly taken set piece. Call it, take it quickly, Origi! There's the news that former Celtic midfielder Jota is already leaving Al Etihad just one month after joining. This man got the bag and then dipped. Meanwhile, Alanson Maximan is also struggling, but this time with the language. Look, listen, he's a little confused, but he's got the spirit. Hello all, and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> Aqui o passo era para pedir o um movimento do Ostak. Não aconteceu. And that concludes. The beautiful game. Over in Turkey, and Hakim Ziyech was announced by Galatasaray during a league match as he conducted the club's ultras in their home end. This is a this is a sick announcement. His former teammate Pierre Emerick Aubameyang was happy for him, saying that the Moroccan was now finally free, probably whilst in the chair at his barber's getting his hairline painted on. Over in South Korea and at Busan Eye Park, this goalkeeper probably should have taken more due diligence throwing the ball out from the back. In Peru, and this manager was not best pleased with VAR and a refereeing decision, so he decided to just shove the monitor off the stand. You can't do that to me, mate. Meanwhile, over in Ukraine... Difficult to talk about football. I listen, what the fuck is going on over there? Force Club, by the way, the club that's done this, they've, they've actually got heritage in not being able to play out from the back. Just stop doing it. Play Route 1 football. Even the manager knows it's a lost cause. Over in Jordan, and after a last minute save from the goalkeeper, he is celebrating his stop by becoming David Bryn. Bruni Bargi had ice in the veins. We're left in the position to take Copenhagen through to the next run of Champions League qualifying. The 17 year old wonder kid scoring a Penenka with the last penalty of the shootout. This Galatasaray player is quite frankly digging for gold during an interview. Meanwhile, Diego Costa slightly flummoxed at the fact that there's another Diego Costa over in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> and in the Netherlands, Sparta Rotterdam were facing off against Feyenoord and a long range strike from Feyenoord ended up in the next city according to Sparta Rotterdam. It's a shithousery award, it's completely unnecessary. Now though for the moment you've all been waiting for because over in Romania, one thing is for sure in this beautiful nation, if you're not a good enough manager you will get the sack pretty early on. And FCU Craiovo have featured in this segment a lot, their boss Nikolai Dica has been sacked after just five games in charge. The board do not hang about. Closer to home now and Wrexham and Swindon played out potentially the best game of the season already. With the score 5-3 to Swindon going into the 90th minute, the last kick of the game would see Wrexham equalise and make it 5-5. Five, five. Oh, wow. Bro, don't jump. There's there's nothing over the other side of the... Ad <laughs> <laughs> Over in Colombia, and this is one of the best clips I think I've ever seen on FTW. We've got a final pen of a shootout being taken, and it's cannoned off the crossbar, looped up into the air. The goalkeeper thinks it's over, only for the ball to bounce off his back and go in to see the other side go through. It's, it's just incredible. In Costa Rica now, and it's fair to say the weather has slightly affected this free kick. Imagine slipping, taking a set piece, and the ball still goes in. In Tanzania, and this goalkeeper will not want to look back at his effort from this free kick again. Estudiantes' boss is a little bit frustrated over in Argentina. <laughs> Meanwhile, back to the goalkeeping howlers and we head over to Qatar. All you've got to do is just get it clear, play it out from the back. <laughs> 
Today I feel uh, Qatari. Over in Armenia, and it's fair to say this game is slightly one-sided here, with Armenia West girls winning 35-0. And speaking of thrashings, RWDM over in Belgium were losing 6-1 into additional time. One defender for these lot just wanted to get himself on the score sheet, I'm convinced. Make it seven. In Mexico, and having a wall for a free kick is purely optional. Meanwhile, this woman in a crowd over in Turkey has simply had enough of her man's antics. And in the Czech Republic, a huge amount of money was placed on bets for over 1.5 goals in the first half of a game on Betfair, which isn't really used that much in the Czech Republic either. And in the 10th minute of injury time, in the 45th minute, with one goal needed for that bet to come through, this penalty was given. I mean, the, the guy's not even gone down. I'm starting to think there might be some dodgy stuff at play here. <laughs> Now there is time for still nil-nil, and you guys know the score by now. This is a segment of the show where I bring to the best of Sunday League and amateur football, and we're heading over to East London and Tower Hamlets FC, who are ready to play their next fixture. Everyone's arrived, everyone's hung over from the night before, it's time to play some football. Except it's not, because the game's gonna get postponed by the referee. For poor weather, for not enough players turning up, no. The reason is, there was too much goose shit on the floor. The ref just wasn't on it, mate. He just wanted to go home. You can't convince me otherwise. On to the weird stuff, though, now. Over in Indonesia, it's been too long since we saw these lot. The worst kit of the season has been announced by Palembang, and it is literally like a, a shirt and tie combination. They look like year sixes at a private school. This is absolutely criminal behavior. And finally, over in the CONCACAF Caribbean Shield, a team from the Dominican Republic, O&M, had an unfortunate journey home from the tournament in St. Kits and Nevis when they were pepper sprayed by security at the airport. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of this happening, but basically after their final group stage match, they needed to get a flight home from St. Kitts and Nevis. The flight then got cancelled, and then after an altercation in the airport, a few of the club's players got pepper sprayed in the face by police. Absolute shambles. That, though, is going to wrap up football this week, and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video, and of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure Pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.